What are the pros and cons of the different models of dog sled? Well, in today's episode, we'll take a look at a few. Hello, welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you may have noticed that I use different sleds in different videos. And so this is, I, I thought that since I have to put the sleds away, is all of our snow is gone, there's some patches out here, um, but there's nothing consistent, there's no trail cover to run the sleds. So it's time to put them away for the season. So before I put them away, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to kind of take a look at each of the three sleds and kind of compare and contrast them. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode. Um, before I get into that though, I am going to ask you is that over the last couple of years we've been doing a lot of videos about dog sledding and I'm going to continue to do that. I've got a whole bunch in mind right now that I'm going to be doing on dog sledding. But we're also kind of expanding a little bit and we're going to start doing some more videos about different things. Uh, just recently I've, I've posted a couple of videos about my 1981 through hike of the Appalachian Trail. I'm going to put together another video from my um, 2013 uh, through paddle of the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. I'm going to do a lot of other ones about climbing and mountaineering and backpacking. So um, you may be here for dog sledding, but I hope you'll give our other videos a shot as well. So um, anyway, let's get to the sleds. So the funny thing is, is that I have two dogs, but I have three sleds. So why is that? Um, well, uh, you know, way back in the day when I had the big team of uh, 12 Malamutes, I had a couple of different sleds and um, sometimes I would run two teams. Sometimes I'd have all t uh, eight or 12 pulling one sled. Sometimes I'd break them up and have two teams of six. Um, now I just have Bandit and Shiva, so I only have two dogs. But I do have three sleds. And here's one of the things that's kind of funny. If you get into dog sledding, you're going to find is that equipment finds you. Go online, um, go on Facebook, find mushing sites, start communicating with other mushers, and you're going to be able to pick up stuff, um, used equipment at a very reasonable rate, and sometimes you can get stuff for free. So let's kind of, um, that's actually the case with each of these three sleds that I have here. The sleds that I used to use on my Malamutes have just aged out and they're in disrepair. Um, so when I started running Bandit Shiva, I needed a sled. So the first sled that I got was this one right here. I actually bought this from a um, used, I bought this from a musher in Vermont. Um, they were running, they had run Siberian Huskies for many years and they were just getting out of it. So they were just getting rid of all their gear. So along with the sled, I got a bunch of harnesses, I got some gang lines, some ropes, um, and I even got a wheeled cart. Um, but really all I wanted was the sled. So let's take a look at the sled. So this is a classic sled. As you can see, it's a wooden sled. It's actually lashed together. I suspect it might be a Frank Hall or a Frank Moody sled, but I haven't delved into that yet. But it certainly has that kind of construction. Um, because of that, this is a real classic. And so this is the one that you saw in a lot of my videos uh, the first couple of years when we started shooting the dog sled videos. It's a great sled, very lightweight. Um, I really like that it has very long runners in the back. It's very stable. Another thing that I like about this sled a lot is that the handlebar is really, um, really broad and straight, easy to hold on to. Um, it's a little low because it was made for the previous musher and she was shorter than I was. So it's a little low, but I've been able to live with that. Um, this is what we call a basket sled. And so we call it a basket sled because I don't have the sled bag on it. You can see these slats right here create the basket. It's a raised basket up off of the snow. Um, racers would call this a sprint sled or, um, you know, it, or, or a day touring sled because it can't hold very much equipment because it's such a small basket. But this has been a really, really great, great sled for me. Um, the thing is, it's such a classic that I've decided to retire it, and we're just going to kind of keep it as a... Um, we're going to keep it in the in the house as uh, something to kind of look at and enjoy as a piece of art almost. By the way, a really, really great classic basket sled. 
This other sled that I have is another basket sled. And this is one that you've seen in a lot of my videos this season. This is the one I've been using the most. Um, this is another basket sled. You can see the slats right there from the basket. Uh, it has the sled bag on it. That sled bag originally goes to the other basket sled, but they're interchangeable. They go back and forth. The bandits is digging a hole in China. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so this is the sled that I've been using. It's a basket sled just like this one. Uh, what's different about it, it's not quite as classic construction. It's a little bit more of a modern construction. So instead of being lashed together, it's bolted together. And uh, you'll see is that. But what, what I like about this sled is the runners are all plastic. Okay, so on my older sled, they're wooden runners with plastic um, gliders underneath. Um, this one here, it's actually very, the runners themselves are actually very, very thick plastic. And it does have some wooden boards, tread boards in the back for me to stand on. But they're very durable, very thick plastic runners. And I like that a lot. Um, this sled came to me, there was another musher here in Massachusetts who ran Siberians and was just getting out of it and posted this sled for free to a good home. So we're providing it a good home. So we've been using it. I do like this sled a lot. Um, some things that I like about it. I like that it's really very flexible. It's very easy to steer because of that. Um, and so I've been very happy with it. What I don't like about it, you'll notice that this, um, the handlebar here is very bowed. And so it's very bowed, it's narrow. It's narrow for me to kind of keep my hands on. I don't have as much of a grip as I do on either of my other two sleds. And in addition to that, not only is it narrow, but because it's plastic, it's very slippery, and so when I'm wearing gloves, my hands will slide down on the side. So I've thought of wrapping it with some grip tape. Um, I've thought of putting some handles on here to kind of be able to steer it here. I may just kind of build it out. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I don't like how narrow this, um, this bow is in the handlebar. Um, because it's plastic, it made it really very, very easy for me. This is my GoPro mount right here. So this is where the GoPro rides when we're shooting our videos with the dogs. But anyway, another basket sled, call it a sprint sled if you want it, or a day trip sled. Um, but uh, very much like this one, it's just sort of a more modern construction. This is the kind of thing you'd find an easy time as a, as a beginner's sled to purchase. Here's my camera crew, hard at work. Today they're behind the lens. Uh, typically they are the stars, front and center in front of the lens. So those are my two basket sleds. My third sled is a little bit different. My, uh, my third sled right here in the middle is what we would call, I call an expedition sled or a cargo sled. Um, this uh, racers would call this a long distance sled. So instead of having the raised basket, what it has instead is it has a, a bed that goes underneath. So there's a toboggan bed that instead of being raised up off the snow is just raised up above the runners. And so the idea here is that in deeper snow, this can actually run on through, through the deeper snow and actually in, not only just be running on the runners, but also be gliding on that toboggan bed. So that toboggan bed allows you to ride on ungroomed deeper snow. And what it also does that that toboggan bed acts as a cargo bed. So what this does is this can hold a lot more weight. This is the kind of sled I used when I had my team of Malamutes. So when I would take paying guests out for tours, I could have a person or two actually riding in the bed here while I'm driving on the back. So this is the sled I would use for longer trips or for trips where if I'm doing an overnight and I need to carry more equipment. This can carry, or if I needed to carry a passenger. This can carry a lot more gear. The other thing I like about this sled too, it has a really broad handlebar. This is very easy to hold. So it's easy for my hands to be on here. It's really easy for me to get a grip on it. My hands don't slide off. I like that a lot. It's also very flexible. Right? It's also very, very flexible. So this is um, a more heavy duty, more versatile sled than the basket sleds are. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. There's my three sleds that I take out with me. Um, they're going to be put away in the shed for the season because I just don't see there being more snow 
um, for us to take the sleds out. So we're going to be bike joring uh, pretty soon. But anyway, um, again, thanks for watching to the end. If you aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe. If you like this video, please like